He said, James. James. And I didn't hear that. Look. I was like, to meet you, sir. But you know, it's like that. I don't know if he's a Christian or not. But when a Christian acts out that way, when a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit, suddenly acts out like that. Imagine if Pastor, hi, Pastor Adam. How are you doing today? Good morning. Merry Christmas, Pastor. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Sign, Pastor. What would you feel? And there are people in the church, by the way, who are that. And I said, that may be your personality, but let me encourage you again. You are trying other people's patience. When you are that, and we don't want to change. We can't change. As I said, that may be our personality, but that does not mean it's right. Or that may be our personality, but that does not mean it's the best. You know? There was one visitor at the home. I'm not going to tell you. I hope the person's not here. Okay. <laughs> and I want to joke around a lot. You know? Like, I surprised my wife. And I don't know. Praise God, Aubrey came out normal when she got, when she was born. But when my wife was pregnant, I treated her like a queen. Didn't want to stress her out. Didn't want to do anything bad to her. She was a queen. And she got spoiled. And she took advantage of it, too. <laughs> This is the way you can get you to do this. I'm going to take advantage of it. But I loved it. I loved it. But one thing I just couldn't resist was to have fun with her. And I can't count the number of times that I've surprised her over and over and over. Boom! You know, like... And, and she got shocked over and over and repeatedly. You know, that's, that's, that's an amazing thing. But we have fun afterwards. You know, it's like, ooh, you know, she gets mad, but we have fun. We laugh at it. And, and, and it's, so I, I, that's, that is me. Okay, and one time, we had, we had, we had, I think the last event at home, big event at home, Julia's birthday, Mel's birthday, I forgot what it was. And so some people were working in the kitchen, you know, and cutting some stuff, you know, and by the, by the, by the faucet. And I went outside. I was outside doing stuff and I could see them. They could see me from the dark. I could see them. And so finally I went like this, bah! you know, like, bah! And the guy just went, this non-smiling guy in our church. Basically looked at me like, who's that? Was that pastor? Yeah, when, when he recognized who was pastor, at least with all due respect to pastor. At least he would have smiled. Like, pastor, oh yeah, you're crazy. I was expecting that. And he goes, it was pastor. And the next, the next question was like, I don't even know what he said. Did he curse me? I don't know. But there was no smile on his face. I just like, but that was what I saw. That's what I saw. I saw. And there was no smile at all. So what? I, I gotta have patience with those people. And now, Aubrey, whatever I did to her mom when she was pregnant, she came out normal, but almost every time. When I come home, I open the door and I arrive, and I'm so cold and tired and wanted to relax, I open the door with this key, and she's just behind me, and she would not open the door for me. Wait for the door to open, I open it and I go, bah, yeah? uh, and I enter to the other door and it goes, bah, you yeah? know? That's a common thing happening. Whatever you sow, you reap. And by the way, there are naturally, there are naturally black humored people in the church. The moment I say it, you know who. I'm going to look at him. I don't know. Black, dark humored people in the church. The way they tease you, the way they make jokes about you, Aiden, is they point out the worst of you. But that's a joke. Don't be offended. Be patient with those people. When not the being tells everybody, everybody, please, please be quiet. She's like, boiling hot, boiling mad. Everybody, please stay, don't move. And here goes the guy going back up everywhere. Let me tell you too. When I used to be, when I used to be like with a celebration team, when I used to be with a celebration team. And I was leading, quote unquote, the celebration team. I was arranging the songs, and I go, please, at this part, we gotta arrange our song, we gotta arrange the music. <laughs> Nobody plays anything here except this, this, this part, this part. The lead comes later, okay, in this part. The lead, the lead, the lead, lead the guitar. Yeah. This part. And boy, he didn't even know how to play the lead yet during that time. <laughs> during the celebration team, worship time, and worship time, he would play lead. <laughs> 
and my patience was up on the roof because the lead was a practice session. It was. And I tried my patience, but to keep the unity between us, I just had to pray for him. <laughs> but after years of that practice, sometimes I have a hard time worshiping. He still does his own thing. He plays lead anytime. But boy, boy, he plays it so well. Either, that it either gets me into the worship so because I love guitar by the way I love lead guitars and that was my era is that era or era <laughs> era you American English people are hard because you got different rules for different things and a lot of exceptions within those rules so era era I've heard preachers say era I've heard preachers say era what is it era uh -huh. In my own time. In my own segment of time in history. We love lead guitars. There is not a song that does not have a lead part in it, especially rock ones. Right? And they show men. So when 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 Queer Marlon plays the lead, I get, into, I get into the worship so deep because I feel it. Man, when he goes, you know, it's like oh, a little boost here. But then sometimes it distracts me too. Yeah, because I fall in love so much with it, I'm like, ooh, that was good. <laughs> that was good. So my patience paid off. Amen. Amen. So you gotta be patient. You know what patience is, by the way? Bearing up with people is not a passive thing. When you bear up with people and not give up on them and say, I'm gonna live with you, it's not you're passive about it, thinking that we're gonna all go to heaven and just make your way, me bearing it with you through all the process. Bearing with each other is with an active expectation and hope that the reason why I'm bearing with you is because I believe by faith that you're gonna change and get better. Amen. Or else you're gonna give up. That's the reason it's faith and hope thing together with bearing up, okay? So let's move on. So those people that are going to be, and by the way, not only are they going to be rude people, black humor people, but there are people that are going to be antagonistic towards you. The first time you met each other, they're just indifferent. I don't know. They just don't know how you look. They don't know your face. You probably have the name of their boyfriend's first girlfriend. You probably act the way they don't like. You may be rich and they're poor and they grew up in a family where they were being oppressed by the rich. So I don't know, whatever the background is, the moment they saw you, or you probably looked like that boyfriend who ditched her or ditched her or whatever, ditched, ditched. <laughs> who left you, okay? dumped you, okay? What's the word used with the D-I something? Dist. D-I-S-S? E-D? So you probably looked like the boyfriend who dissed her and hurt her so much for the first time. So the moment you saw you, you didn't have anything to do with her life, but you just hates you. Have you met people like that? Yeah, just indifferent completely. For what? Personality differences? Somebody growing up in a family that's very disciplined, and somebody growing up in a family that there's no discipline, you met each other, bang, okay? There's gonna be a conflict right there because of your expectations of each other. But yeah, you hate each other, you're different to each other, and you're hostile, and there are people in the church, by the way, let me tell you, and there are people in your relationship who does not mind being a heartache to you, but you don't have to do that to them. They could lash out on you, they could say anything against you, they could do whatever towards you, but you don't do that to them because they're gonna leave the relationship. There are people like that. And there'll be people who are really, really antagonistic. They would wanna irritate you. They would wanna be sarcastic. They, they do say things that will really get you mad. Okay, but again, being patient means you just have to bear with those people without being affected by that. That's the reason why. Here we go again. The Apostle Paul encourages the young pastor. Ooh, this is the context of the pastor, by the way, but it applies to every one of us. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, he says, And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. They will provoke you to fight. Do you think there are... What, pastor? Oh, fight? That's not what happens in the church. There are no fightings in church. Wake up. And smell the coffee. We've had we've had World War Threes in our council <laughs> meetings before. Of course, you didn't see him. It was between the most spiritual people in the church. The council. Oh, you've had fights. 
Have you had fights? How many of you here? I just want to know, how many of you have fought with somebody in the church? Raise your hands. Okay. Is it Yoli against everybody else? <laughs> in the church. Raise your hands. Okay. But yes, if that fight happens in the church, why are you laughing? It's a joke. Okay. So, you're laughing still. It's really a joke. Did I just inherit a black humor here? Okay. So you fight fights in the church, you're going to have fights everywhere else. Are you following me? You're even going to have fights in heaven. No, just kidding. No, no, no. You're not going to have fights in heaven. But yes, there are fights that happen in the church. So please bear with those people. And according to, to Paul, to Paul, um, his words to Timothy, you must not be quarrelsome. Don't fight. Don't fight. The worst thing that could be, you know what? The biggest testimony that we are really followers and disciples of Jesus Christ is when we love each other. The worst testimony that, this, and that this proves that we are disciples of Jesus Christ is when we have fights against each other. Right? So the moment you start talking, the worst thing, by the way, is when you have something against a Christian and you tell your friends who are not believers about your problems with believers. How can they be one for Jesus Christ and receive the hope that Christmas so beautifully gives to them just because of the skirmish or misunderstanding you have with each other? But there are people, there are people who feel comfortable being disobedient, sarcastic, and being rude and being a fighter against you or hostile to you. Okay, but here you go. Be patient. Everybody say, be patient. Bear with each other. Or bear each other. Again, with this, be patient because we are God's servants. Second Corinthians 6, 4, rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses. So just a very short um, magnification of this part. Bearing with others is a God is, is a given for a God's servant. Okay, for a God's servant. And all of us are both sons and servants, or daughters and servants. Our relationship with God is He is our Father and our Master. So all of us are servants. And a call in this servanthood is that we ought to be bearing each other. Okay, why? They said if you're a servant and you bear each other, there's a commend. One of the things that you do that is very commendable to God. How many of you want to please God? How many of you want to live a commendable life before God? Here you go. Bear each other. Now, as I say this again, I want you to be thinking of the people who are giving you the hardest time. Do you have people like that? Hopefully not, but if you do, think about them. You don't have to point them right now. No, no. Okay, but think about them, and then that's the one you think about, I've got to bear with them. Okay, Because that's the call that God is asking us to do. So it necessitates, number one, humility, and then it necessitates patience, and then the third one, it necessitates self-control. Why is that? 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it or bear it. Now the context of that is temptation. Most of the time we talk about temptations, we talk about situations, circumstances outside. But here are some things that you would notice, by the way, that I'll point out regarding this point. It necessitates self-control because of the fact that according to this verse, temptation will come. We will be tempted. Okay? And this temptation is common to everyone. The temptation that will come to you it's not a unique temptation that you'll face. It is common to everybody, but it also says it's either bearable or God will provide a way of escape from or through the temptation. That's the assurance that we've got regarding this. Second, because our temptation may come not just from situations, but from people. It may come from people. Here you go. Listen carefully. Temptations may come from people outside of the church, outside of other relationships, or it may come from within the church or from other relationships. Again, you get shocked, especially those of you who are very ignorant or innocent, so not ignorant, but innocent perception about the church. Shock, your mouth drops, your jaw opens wider, or your jaw opens and your mouth, I mean, your jaw drops and your mouth opens much wider because shocks of all shocks, what? Church?